Hey guys, okay, do you have issues when printing your PDF patterns? Is your sewing pattern being cut off at the edges or borders, preventing your pattern from matching up when you print and piece them together? Well, we have a really effective fix for this. We're gonna show you how to create your very own PDF print templates that match the dimensions of your printer's printable area. We'll even show you how to add your own company logo to add yet more personalization to your print templates. So just to demonstrate this concept, as you can see here, I've printed off my A4 PDF pattern, but on, let's say, a template that is a little bit too small or too large. As you can see, the pattern is not actually matching up here, so obviously we can't piece this pattern together. So I'm gonna show you how to create PDF print templates that match your printer settings perfectly so that you're not gonna have this issue. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're going to determine the measurements of your printer's print area. To do this, we're gonna jump over to the Mac and open up Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I'm just gonna open up Adobe Illustrator and I'm gonna create a new, let's say, PDF template. So, I'm just, sorry, create a new document and I'm gonna use A4. If you're using US Letter or A3, then obviously open up um, the, let's say the paper size that you're, you're wanting to use. So A4. So what we need to do is basically find out how capable our printer is. In other words, how, what is the printer area of our printer? And the easiest way to do this is just in Adobe Illustrator. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to my line tool, which is just over here on the left-hand side. I'm just gonna click on the fill. I'm gonna remove the fill, and let's double click on the line and make it black. Click OK. I'm just going to go, let's say, to the middle, roughly where the middle of my document is. I'm gonna click and drag a line. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key while I'm clicking and dragging to lock it to the horizontal. I'm just gonna release, and then I'm gonna go roughly to the middle of the vertical, click and drag, hold down the Shift key to lock it to the vertical axis, and then just release. And it's got a big section tool, click and drag over both of these. Let's go to our line, and I'm just gonna up the stroke to be about eight points, just so we can clearly see this. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go File. So when we print this out, this is the edge of the document, but when I print this out, obviously the printer will only print what it's capable of printing. Therefore, the measurement from this edge to this edge and this edge to this edge will define our printer area. Anyway, let's just show you that. So file, let's go save as. I'm gonna save it as a PDF on my desktop. Let's call this um, printer area setup doc. And I'm gonna save it as a PDF. And the reason why I'm saving it as a PDF and not printing it directly from Adobe Illustrator is simply because our final artboards, uh, sorry, our finished print templates are going to be saved as PDF and printed as PDFs. So I want to make sure I'm consistent, so I'm printing in PDF. Let's just double click on that document. I'm gonna hit Control P on my keyboard. I'm gonna make sure it's black and white, pages, all, yep, A4, portrait. Obviously make sure that these are the correct size for if it's US letter, A3, et cetera. Scale, this is the most important part. So at the moment it's 97%. We want to make sure it's 100% scale. And then copies, portrait, perfect. Let's just click print. Okay, so the next step, what we're gonna do is, as you can see, basically this is my printout here. What I'm gonna do is take a really good ruler, so a reliable ruler, in other words, not a tape measure, because that could stretch. I'm just gonna measure literally from the edge of this little piece to this little piece, so from edge to edge. This is basically the printer's printable area. So I'm just gonna measure that, and it's gonna, it comes to, for me, and it'll be different for everyone, it's roughly 20.4 centimeters. So I'm just gonna basically mark that down. That's 20.4, and then here, let's have a look, what do we have? We have, so if that's 20, so is it 20, and this is 29.2. So you have 20.4 and 29.2. So I'm just gonna record those dimensions. Okay, so now that we actually know the dimensions of our printer area, which is for me 20.4 and 29.2, uh, we can then start to create our print template safe in the knowledge that uh, we actually know the print area. So what I want to do is let's just get rid of this existing document. Let's click don't save. Let's go to file and then new. Now this is where we're going to create our print templates. And here what I want to do is I'm going to go to, so when you click new, we're going to go create a custom one. So we're going to go to centimeters. And then here I'm going to put, so it was 20.4 for the width centimeters. Now I don't want to go to my the full border, sorry, so the full print area because it might be a little bit unwieldy. We'll have very, very small borders to trim. So I'm actually going to take this down to Let's make it 19.4. So we're removing one centimeter, so it'd be 0.5 on each side. That still might not be enough, so why don't we take it down to 17.4. So we're removing three centimeters, which is 1.5 on either side. This is making a document that's far, far smaller. And then we had, what was it, 29.2, I believe it was. So let's remove three centimeters. Let's make it 26.2. 
And then here we have the number of artboards. Now this is important. So if you have a very, very large, let's say, pattern that you want to print off, possibly it's going to take 30 A4 pages. So here we could put in 10 artboards or 10 pages. But let's just stick with something simple right now, which is 15, okay? We're going to make a very small print template. And you can make this 100, 200, whatever. But because I want to show you the technique and do it quite quickly, we're going to use 15 artboards. And then obviously here we have a bleed. We want to make sure these are all zero centimeters when it comes to bleed. But let's also go to more settings, okay, which will bring up this little dialog box. So actually this is probably a better place to do it. So we can name it. We can call it A4 Print Template and then Home Printer, just so you know that it's set for yours. Number of artboards, 15, which is great. And we can also set the order. So this is probably the best one, grid by row. So each page will be one, two, three, four, then the next row, etc. Spacing, this must be zero. Okay, very important. This is really important, so zero spacing. Columns, I'm going to make it five. So that way we have five across the top. So five in the first row, five in the second row, and five in the third row. So 15 divided by five is three. The width we already have set, so 17.4 and 26.2, which is great. Unit centimeters, orientation, portrait is important as well. Bleed, zero. And the rest we don't have to really worry about. And let's just click Create Document. And as you can see here, we have our print template waiting or raring to go. And let's just check. So I'm going to measure the width and the height. So I'm going to my, my little line tool. I'm going to click on the very edge here. Click and drag. Hold down the Shift key to lock it to the horizontal. And you can see that is 17.4. And then down, this is going to be 26.2. So we've now set up this artboard or this print template to work with our printer and give us quite a lot of border when it comes to printing. But next, we need to create some registration marks. We're going to add some labels. We're going to put like a scale on there and do all kinds of things to turn this into a proper print template and even put our logo on there as well. So we'll do that next. Okay, so when it comes to adding registration marks and let's say scale guides and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you one of our existing A4 print templates. Now, just to give you an idea of what we're going to put on here. So as you can see, we have A1, A2, A3. So we have the, the page numbers at the top. So we have row A, one to whatever. And then B is the second row, one to, let's say five, C. So it just gives you an idea when you print this out, the page order and how these patterns are meant to go together. So this is really important. Second of all, we have the scale. So we have zero to five centimeters and we have inches, one to three inches. So that's important when it comes to printing out. You then obviously measure um, this using a ruler and it will tell you if you've got the scale correct because obviously this should be five centimeters when printed out. And we also have these little chevron uh, registration marks which are at the corner of each of the document and also in the center as well. And then at the very bottom here, let's just zoom in, you can see we have our little patternlab.london um, copyright symbol. But we can also add a logo to here if you want to. Uh, and that's what we kind of said that we'd show you in the tutorial. So. We're going to add all of these elements and we're going to build them from scratch. So let's just close down our A4 print template. Let's go to this document that we just created. And let's start off by creating one of these pages and then we can duplicate it. So first of all, I'm going to go to my text tool. And let's just click here and I'm going to go A1. Great. You can even choose a font, possibly have a brand font. Ours is Railway. There we go. And we can make that regular just so it's all within the brand. And we can make this slightly larger so you can just... Big selection tool, and then to go 12, 13, 14 points if you want. There we go. We can even centralize it or text center. And then next, we're going to create our scale. So let's go to our line tool. And then let's just simply switch this over. So we have the line fill is going to be black, or you can double click it and then just select black. And we're going to draw a tiny, let's zoom in. Also, there's some tools here. So if you hold down the space key on your keyboard, you get this little hand appear. And if you click and drag, you can move around the page very easily without having to use these really annoying um, side scrollers. And also, if you hold command or, yeah, command or control on your keyboard and then hit plus and minus, you can zoom in and out. So that's really helpful. So let's just zoom in. Getting my line tool, I'm going to make sure my line color or stroke color is black. I'm just going to draw a little line like this. I'm going to hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. And I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click and drag over that element to select it. Then hit the enter key on my keyboard. And here I'm going to put one centimeter and zero. So one centimeter horizontally and, one cent and zero centimeters vertically. I'm just going to hit copy. And then with this one selected, I'm going to hit command D, D, D on my keyboard. So I hit command D and it will duplicate the last move. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is five centimeters. We move this by one cm. 
then we duplicated that movement, so now this should be 5cm. And we're going to measure that. So I'm going to hit my line tool, I'm going to click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to that horizontal. I'm just going to drag it out until I hit that final edge. And you can see in that little grey box it says 5 centimeters. So we know that that scale is correct. And we've also drawn the bottom edge of our scale chart or scale guide. Next what I'm going to do is get my big section tool. I'm going to click and drag over this whole element. I'm going to go object and then I'm going to go group. And that means I can just move it around and it's not individual elements, it's all one piece. And next let's just place it up in the top left hand corner here. Let's get our text tool. I'm going to put 0 cm. Oops. 0 cm. Let's move it down to here. It's a little bit large so let's just go with that selected. Let's just move that down. Let's also align text align it left. Seven points should be fine. Let's click and drag it to here. And then let's copy and paste it. So Command C, Command V to copy and paste. Let's place it at the opposite end. Get the small selection tool. Double click to edit the text and make five, add that to five centimeters. Then once again, get my big section tool. Click and drag over all of this and then go object and then group. And we're also gonna make an inches one. We do it in exactly the same way. So let's just get our line color, so our stroke color. Let's make sure it's black. Click OK. Let's go to our little line. I'm just going to simply click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. There we go. Let's zoom in. Let's get my big section tool. Click and drag, hit the enter key on my keyboard. Then we're going to go 2.54 centimeters, which is an inch, but you can also do one and then the inch symbol on your keyboard and hit copy. And it didn't work. Let's just do that again. Hit the enter key. Let's just go 2.54. For the horizontal, zero for vertical, hit copy, and then D, and we can hit D again. And then get your big section tool, click and drag over all of these elements, object, group. We can then click and drag and move it back onto the page. We'll get our line tool, click and then drag all the way along, make sure that is 7.62, which is three inches, which is great. Big section tool, click and drag, object, group. And here, text tool, zero CM, not CM, sorry. Zero inches, you can even write inches if you really want, or zero inch. Let's just big section tool, click and drag that over to here, <coughs> copy and paste it, and then here you can put three inch. Okay, so that's how we create our scale. You might find that these lines are a little bit too thick, so what we can do is we can get a small section tool, click and drag over these ones, go to our stroke, and let's take that down to 0.5. Same for this one, click and drag, take that down to 0.5. Okay, so that is our scale. And what we could do is let's just get a big section tool, click and drag over these, go object and then group. <coughs> and we could also click and drag over this one, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection, click and drag over this one, and then go object and then group. And now if we select over all of these elements, including A1, we can then go align center. And that will then just put them in the correct position which is great. Okay, so we've created our scale and our number, which is brilliant. You could always move this off, let's say, to the left-hand side, just uh, if you haven't got much space here. So next, we're going to create our chevron diamond or the registration marks. Now, to do that, once again, double-click on your stroke. Let's go to black. You could always have it a different color if you wanted to highlight it. Let's use Pattern Lab Blue, 62B4C7. And then let's get our square tool, which is here, or rectangle tool. Let's just click, and let's zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to draw a square, but I'm going to hold down the shift key, and the shift key basically locks it or constrains it to be a proportionate square where all sides are the same. If you don't do that, you'll have an oblong, which is not correct. Hold down the shift key, click and drag. I'm going to make it about that size. Get it my big selection tool. And the corner here, if you just hover lightly on the corner, you'll see it gives you a rotation option. I'm going to click and drag and just rotate. If I hold down the shift key, it'll lock it, you see, to all of the various different degrees. So this is 315 degrees, which gives us a diamond. I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to try and find the center. You see, you see the center there. I'm going to click and drag, and then just match it up with the edge of the page. And I'm going to do this, so I'm going to copy and paste it. Get the center, click and drag. Let's go down to the bottom. Paste it in, click and drag. Paste another one. Click and drag, and it depends how many, oops, be careful you get it on the center line. So let's paste. Click and drag, perfect. Let's paste again. Also, actually, it's really important to mention this, so I have this already. So if you go to View, and then go to Snap to Point, this is really helpful. If this is unticked, 
when you move these around, it won't snap. Well, it is doing it now, but sometimes it doesn't actually snap to that point. So make sure when you go view, you want to make sure you snap to point. And let's also go snap to glyph. Uh, these, these make, two, the, make sure these two are selected. So once again, I'm going to copy and paste. You might want to add one in the middle of this long edge. So let's do that. It should show you the halfway point if you just move it up and down the page. Is it doing it? No, that's fine. But that's okay because I can show you how to align this to make sure it's in the center of the page. Let's just make sure it's on that edge. And then let's just click, just copy and paste a new one to the opposite side. Let's get our big selection tool. Click and drag over those three elements. And then here I'm going to align or distribute vertically. So for example, if it was off center, let's just click and drag over these three elements with the big selection tool. I'm just going to align center and that will make sure it's in the center. Same with this one. Imagine it's off center. We're just going to select all three and then align center. Great, so we've now created our scale, our page numbering, and our, let's say, edges, or our registration marks. Next, we're going to add in our logo. Great stuff, here's my logo. I'm just going to drag it onto the page. And then just going to go, uh, let's go, get my big section tool, click and drag over the whole item, and then go edit, copy. Let's go to our A4 print template, and let's just go paste and paste it in. And obviously you can scale this, change the size of it. Let's just make it quite small. And let's just place that down in the bottom corner. And we can even make this blue or any color we want to make it. But I'm gonna leave it as black. Oh, just make sure it's grouped. So big section tool, click and drag over all of it. Let's go object and then group. So it's one item and let's just move it here. Great, so we now have our print template pretty much set up, but how do we replicate this for the rest of the pages? Well, it's really simple. So what we do is let's get our big selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag over this top element here. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and this will queue up the selection. So I'm then gonna hold down the shift key, click on this item, this one, this one, this one. I'm not gonna select these three on this side because when I actually drag this across, they're already gonna be present because we had them here. So I'm just gonna be selecting all of this right hand side. And I can even go object and then group to make sure when we move it, it's all one item. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to select this little corner piece here and I'm gonna try and find the center of this. So when I drag it, I can drag it to that corner which will make things much, much easier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my big section tool once I've selected all of it. I'm gonna go to that center point. I'm gonna hold down the option key and the option key gives you this little double arrow. And what that means is it's going to, it's going to copy it. So holding down the option key, I'm gonna copy and drag. So I'm just gonna click and drag and as you can see it's copying. I'm also gonna hold down the shift key on my keyboard and that will lock it to the horizontal axis. And then I'm just simply going to line up with that page edge, like so, perfect. And because I've already made that move, let's just zoom out, I'm gonna hit the command D, so command D, D, D. And that should duplicate it across the page. Now there's one thing that we need to be careful of here. As I've duplicated, I haven't quite got it just on the edge. So with the very, very end, pa with the very, very end page, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna zoom right in. And I'm just gonna click on that center point, drag it across, hold down the shift key to lock it to the the horizontal and let's just make sure that that is directly in the center which it is now looking perfect this is a really important part so once we have that aligned i'm then going to get my big section tool i'm going to click and drag over all of these click and drag over all of these and i'm then going to align or distribute horizontally and you might not have seen any changes there but what it should have done is place these in the center. So let's go back. You see how this is slightly off center because I've selected all of them. You see how they've all been selected like this. Let's just zoom in. I'm then gonna go distribute horizontally and that will distribute them perfectly across all those artboards. So now they should all be nicely lined up. And we're gonna do exactly the same going down. So once again, I'm gonna grab all of these but obviously I don't want to use these ones here because we already have these in place. So let's just select everything. Let's go object ungroup. So we can now edit them independently, you see? And then let's just simply click and drag over all of these elements apart from the top ones. In fact, let's click and drag over all of this, but then let's zoom in. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and unselect these top diamonds. Just hold down the shift key to unselect and then just click. So hold down the shift key, click to unselect. And then now I'm going to go object and then group. I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm going to get the center of this point. I'm going to click, hold down the option key, 
I'm going to click and drag, hold down the shift key to align it vertically until we've reached the center point just there. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to hit the control D just to replicate that last move. Command D. And I'm going to go right down to the bottom and I'm just going to make sure, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to make sure that it's on point and it's not quite on point. So I'm just going to click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. And I'm just going to try and make sure it's in the right location. And if I can't get it in the right location for some reason, because it's being a bit of a pain, with all of it selected, we can just simply use the arrow keys and nudge it down. And that's not going to work either. So let's just move this right down. Then let's move it right back up and try and find that center point. There we go. That's looking good. So just play around with it a little bit. So when you're happy that it's at the very, very, when it's lined up with that bottom edge, which it is, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over all of these. I'm then going to go distribute vertically. And that should put them all in the perfect place, which they are, which is looking fantastic. So that is pretty much my print template complete. So if we had, let's say, 100 pages, we would have to replicate this move over and over and over again until we completed all of those 100 pages. We'd then line it up at the bottom, and then we would select all of them, and then we'd distribute horizontally. So we're just using a small one. But also, as you can see, we have got A1, 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 which is great, but they're all going to be page A1. So I'm just going to simply get my small section tool, double click on this text, highlight all of it, and let's just go A2. This one, A3, A4, A5. Let's go down to the next row. So it's going to be B because we're on the second row. So B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. Let's do C. I'm sure you get the idea by now. But obviously, if you had 100 pages, you would have to do this for all of them. C3, C4. C5. Great. So that's our print templates completed, which is amazing. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to go File, Save As. Let's place it on our desktop. And I'm going to name this A4 Print Template Home Printer. I'm going to save it as an AI document. Now, the reason why is because this should be fully editable. It allows you then to, when you have your patterns, you can then place your patterns onto this. If it was saved as a PDF, it would output, export it as multiple PDF pages, and there's nothing you can do with that. So let's save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. Ooh, however, first of all, before we do that, at the moment, you see how these are all selectable, and I can move them. This is a problem, because we might make a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, let's select all of these. Let's go Object, and then Lock Selection. But also, I'm going to go to the Layers, which is off on my right-hand side here. If you can't find it, go to Window, and then Layers. Click on the Layers. And then here I'm going to create a new layer. So this is layer one. And we can even call this print template. And I'm going to click a new layer, which will be on top. And we can call this pattern area. And if I simply click this little box here, it will lock the print template layer. So there's nothing we can do to it. So then when we add our pattern, we add it to the pattern area. And that way, there's no way we're ever going to have any problem by editing this uh, this print template and causing these little registrations to move and have all kinds of issues. So it's good to do this little method here and then save it. So now we're going to go File, Save As, Desktop, A4 Print Template. It's going to be an AI file. So let's just click Save. Click OK. And then let's just get rid of these. I'm going to close this down. So now, as you can see, this is my A4 Print Template. If I double click it, it'll open up in Adobe Illustrator. And then if we want to, we can now add a pattern to this on that pattern area. And to do that, it's really simple. So what we'll do is I will just simply find a pattern. Let's have a look. Copy. OK, so let's say we have a pattern. I'm just going to simply paste it by copying and pasting it onto my A4 PDF print template. And as you can see, we can now move these around to and we have tutorials on this. We've already done this many, many times. This tutorial is not about placing your patterns. This is about creating the PDF print templates, which we have done. OK, so that is how you create your own PDF print templates that are set up to work specifically with your home printer. If you have any suggestions as to how we can improve this tutorial, uh, or possibly if you have some AI tips and tricks, then uh, you know please leave us a comment. We love hearing your feedback. But more importantly, uh, it really helps our community learn and grow and improve their skills. Also, don't forget, if you're new to this channel, then hit the subscribe button. We've got some really amazing content coming your way, and we would hate for you to miss it. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.